Hello, my name is Veronica and welcome to the Learning Lab episode number 48, kind of a part two, more of using your border punches on circles and ovals. Come join me in the lab today and let me share another fab idea with you. So after playing around with these, getting some to work, getting some not to work, and some just plain old giving me the blues, I, it dawned on me, Veronica, why are you trying to take the corner punch to the circle and get them all in a line when you already have them all in a line. So I went from this punch to this. Stunning. That's all I can say. I went from there to this. And I used my uh, pine needles, just straight border punch on that, went down a strip and put them around my circle. Who knew? Then I wanted to play with a couple of my Spellbinder punches. And this one, the double loop one, let's say I need a different color. The double loop one turned out fine. As you can see, I didn't make my loop long enough. But hey, here's something different for your uh, Spellbinder punches. So I didn't stop there. This one is around a three inch circle that you can see I ran through the cuddle bug. I used this little... Um, loopy punch right here and went around my circle with these big huge loops that I love and it just didn't want to cooperate it came out more like um, an apron for a lid jar so if you wanted to make this to cover a cookie jar or something you could because that's how it came out and I think it's just the nature of the arcs and the circles on this. So what I did was I just took my scissors and cut apart those areas and got something that looked like this. You know, I wasn't totally thrilled with it, but you know what? It'll work. So I was starting on this one. I was putting some of those beautiful tulips around it and I'll show you how I did that. Now when I'm using liquid glue and this Scotch Quick Dry adhesive happens to be one of my favorites, I leave it laying on its side so that when I pick it up, my glue is ready to go and I don't have to sit there shaking it, trying to get it down to the tip. So now, just putting down a line of glue all the way around. My tulips, now with this one, I had not removed the edge yet, so I'm gonna go up close as I can and take that off. And working from back, the purpose here is just to make sure that this edge does not go, does not protrude beyond the blue. And because I've cut my little slits, I can arc this around and continue to press. Okay, so now you just tripled the value of your punches. And then I get around to here where I need to be and I'm going to snip closer to this one in case, uh, you know, something terrible, crazy happens, but that's it. Let me turn this over kind of slowly for you and voila, beautiful, beautiful masterpiece. So they're all evenly spaced. They're all in perfect alignment and they are all just absolutely gorgeous. I have to say though, my favorite cut has to be this one with the wrought iron going around. Incredible. So although I did this one using the tulip punch, I'd also like to share with you how it can work with other punches that you own. And this is one of those from EK Success. This is one that I've already started. And as you can see, I'm doing it on both sides of the paper because you're only going to need just a little bit to get this done. Now, when you're punching these and you say, mine don't come out quite even, once you get it lined up on this side, hold this with your finger and just give this a little push to make sure it's in there all the way. And you're gonna be guaranteed an even punch all the way down your paper. Now, what I would do at this point is I would put it on my trimmer or I can take my scissors and just go straight down the middle. At this point, I want to make my little slit marks. 
I would say don't go on a stress point. And in this case, right between here is going to be a stress point. So I'd probably go right up to between the two O's on the boot or anywhere within there. And you start making your little snips. I've got a lot of different blue variegation going on around my circle on this. And I'd like to share with you how I got that using the boo that I just punched. But that's how you would add the ink to your piece prior to placing it around your circle so that you can get something nice and delicate like this. Now it's all done. I just simply need to make my snips and then I can get this to go around any circle in which I want to place somebody who's just too cute to spook. So just that little bit of inking will allow you to create something very delicate looking like this or something very elegant looking like this. This would really enhance a heritage page. But don't stop there. Think about all those spellbinder nestability dies that you have. This one happens to be on the oval shape. Put something like that in the center. Incredible. Here's another label that could go inside of a circle. Gives it an entirely different look. So when you're looking at your punches again, think about ways that you can punch it up and take it to the next level. Even though this didn't turn out the way I wanted, it's okay. Look at those ladybugs in the center of that. Super duper cute. Love the arches and how they came out just by simply going all the way around the page. So please remember to visit my blog at inkillusions.blogspot.com where you're going to find a lot more information and inspiration to keep you excited, to keep you creating and get those juices flowing. Until then.